This is going to be Romans chapter 1, and we're going to see what a man rejects on his way to hellfire. He rejects a lot of things. If you're not saved, then you're going to have to reject a lot of things that God puts in your way, on your way to eternal damnation in a lake of fire, where you will burn and be tormented for all eternity. Number one, a man who is on his way to hell is in rejection of the gospel if he hasn't heard it. If you've heard the gospel and you're not saved and you die, then you're going to die without the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to die without the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And you're going to go to hell with your own sin on you. You need to get your sins taken away by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So, as you see, Paul is separated into the gospel of God. So, Paul believes the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he preaches to a lost sinner. And notice in verse 1, he says he was separated unto the gospel of God. He wasn't only separate from the world, he was separated unto something. We need to be separate from the world meaning we don't need to be doing the same thing the world's doing, but we also need to be doing something for God. He was separated unto the gospel. Romans 1.16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So Paul wasn't ashamed to give out the gospel, the gospel that saves men from hell. For one thing, he knew that it saved people from hell. That's why he's preaching it. He knew it was the only way. He knew that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. And he loved sinners so much and knew hell was so bad that he even says he could wish himself a curse for his kinsmen according to the flesh. He would die and go to hell if he could get the Jews to believe the gospel. But that wasn't possible for him to do. It was uh, up to them to believe the gospel. It's up of your own free will to choose Jesus Christ. You're born going the devil's way, and you have to choose the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God chooses you, and the devil chooses you, and you got to break the tie. You choose one of the two. And if you just die without even giving it a thought, then you automatically choose the devil. And if you go to hell... The reason you go is because you rejected the clear gospel written in the King James Bible. Now notice Romans 1 in verse 3. It says, Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Now notice Paul calls Jesus Christ the Son of God. He says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And it says, he declared to be the son of God with power. So this makes Jesus Christ equal with God when you say that he's the son of God. So Paul believes that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. If you look at John 5, 18, it says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, referring to Jesus, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but it said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus Christ referred to himself as the Son of God, and that made him equal with God. If Jesus Christ was not God, there would have been no resurrection. And if he wasn't God, then he was a sinner just like me and you. And verse 3 says, Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. He was of the seed of David according to the flesh, but he was God's son. He had God's blood going through his veins. Now verse 4, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. So you see, Paul believes in the resurrection, which is part of the gospel. The gospel is given in 1 Corinthians 15, also by Paul, 
where he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the resurrection is part of the gospel. And that's part of what you're rejecting on your way to hell. The resurrection proves the sinlessness of the Lord Jesus Christ. It proves His deity, which means that He was God. And if you go to hell, then you reject God sacrificing His Son to pay for your sins. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, He became sin for us. Every sin you ever committed was put on Him on the cross. He already paid for your sins. Now, you just have to accept the payment for the sin. Now, if you reject the payment, that's what you're going to reject on your way to hell. Now, number two, we've seen how a man rejects the gospel on his way to hell. Now, number two, a man rejects what the preacher says on his way to hell. The preacher gives you the gospel. You reject that. And then Romans 1, 1 through 4, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, there are millions of people who reject what the preacher says on the radio, or at church, or on the street, or at their front door, and they go to hell. Paul is a servant of Jesus Christ, as the verse says, and he's going around telling other people about Jesus Christ. And God has men going out trying to get you to go to heaven, just like he had prophets. The prophets uh, in the Old Testament, where it says he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, he had prophets in the Old Testament trying to get people to turn to him. And if you go to hell, you reject what Paul says and you reject what the prophets said about Jesus Christ in what the verse calls the Holy Scriptures. And have you ever been in church or somewhere and the preacher was telling you that you're a sinner and that you're going to die and go to hell, but you just didn't do anything about it? You'll remember what the preacher said when you get to hell. And I'd hate to go to hell after I've heard warning, after warning, after warning. Every time you drive by a church, every time you see... A church bus every time you see a bible in a doctor's office every time you hear a preacher preach on the street every time you're given a gospel tract every time a, a preacher come to your door and knocked on it trying to get you to be saved you're going to remember all those times that you had an opportunity to believe the gospel but you reject what the preacher said and the prophets and the holy scriptures told us about jesus and if you've heard any of what they said, you reject what they say. Even though they didn't have Jesus Christ revealed to them, they had it written down. And we have it revealed to us today. Unto whom it was not revealed, it wasn't revealed unto them, but unto us that did minister the things. As it says in Peter's epistle. And now we know that Jesus Christ is on every page in the Old Testament. We know that Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. And if you go to hell, then you reject what every preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has said to you. So you reject the gospel. You reject what the preacher says. And number three, you also reject a free gift. Romans 1, 5 through 6 says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the call of Jesus Christ. The church of Christ will say the obedience to the faith is water baptism. And this is false doctrine. This is completely of the devil to say that water baptism takes away sin when it has nothing to do with taking away sin. If you look at Romans sixteen twenty six, it says, But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So the obedience in Romans 1, 5 through 6, is about having faith, and God gives every person who ever lived enough faith to believe. They accept that gift, or they reject that gift. He doesn't leave anybody out, and He doesn't override anyone's free will. Everyone has an opportunity to accept or reject the free gift of salvation. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Romans 12, 3, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He gives every man enough faith to believe. But there comes a point where they reject that faith. And they don't want to believe. They don't even want to retain God in their knowledge. And someone asked, how much faith do I need to be saved? If you had enough faith to come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner, call on Him and believe the gospel, that's enough faith. Enough faith to call on Him. That's all it takes to be saved. How shall you call on Him in whom you have not believed? You believe in your heart to salvation. Uh, I would hate to go to hell. I'd hate to go to hell and burn and weep and wail and gnash of teeth and see the devils and the devil and every wicked thing that's ever been when all I had to do was accept a free gift that was offered by the creator of the universe that was mindful of a sinner like me and you. He was mindful enough of us to send the Lord Jesus Christ, who's God in the flesh, to die on the cross for our sins. And we have the opportunity to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And that can be our payment for our sin. And we can go to heaven. Quit relying on your own good deeds and your own self-righteousness to get you to heaven. And rely on Jesus Christ and what he did to be your payment for sin. Number four, you reject the privilege of suffering for Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, then it's a privilege for you to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you reject the gospel, if you reject what the preacher says, if you reject the free gift, then you also reject the privilege that comes along with being a Christian and serving Jesus Christ and suffering with Him. Romans 1, 7-8 says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So Paul says the Romans faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And many times a sinner will reject the gospel because he doesn't want the world to know that he's a Christian. But the Romans, every, they knew that the, these guys were Christians. Their faith was spoken of throughout the whole world. And he wouldn't want them to know, the lost sinner wouldn't want them to know that he's a new creature and a changed man. So he doesn't believe the gospel. He doesn't get saved. He doesn't want his friends to think he's crazy. He doesn't want to suffer rejection from the sinful world, this present evil world. He is the friend of the world and an enemy of God. Second Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. A lost sinner may not get saved because he knows he'll end up being rejected from friends, from family, from co-workers in the world. He knows that if he gets saved and cleans up his act, that people will think he is a goody-goody and people will just laugh at him. But it's better to get laughed at here by other sinners than to go to hell and have the devil laugh in your face in the fire. And if you go to hell, then you reject the privilege of suffering for Jesus Christ. And the Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Acts 5.41 says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So they counted, they counted it as a blessing to be worthy to suffer shame for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now number five, if you go to hell, then you reject real fellowship. A lost person has friends, but those friends most of the time just take him further and further from Jesus Christ. And they may be loyal, but nothing can compare to real Christian fellowship between Christian friends. If you're saved, then you have people to pray for you. You have people who can help you spiritually. Men reject Jesus Christ many times because a friend is holding them back. They are worried about what their friend will think. And maybe they're living with someone outside of marriage and that's keeping them from salvation. People keep people from salvation many times. And I'd hate to go to hell with that on my record, that I kept someone from being saved and then them go to hell with me. I'd hate to go to hell as a father who acted like a moron and a horrible parent to my son or daughter and then see them come straight to hell years after I got there, knowing that I could have got right 
and I could have showed them the right way. I could have showed them the King James Bible. I could have given them the gospel. But instead, I lived for myself. I was a drunk. I was a fornicator. I was a, a dope addict. I led my kid down the wrong way, and now they're in hell with me. I'd hate I'd hate to have that. I'd hate to go to hell with that on my record. Romans 1, 9 through 15 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. So Paul never ceased to pray for other Christians. And if you're rejecting the gospel, then you really don't have Christian fellowship where you can be prayer partners with another brother or sister in Christ. You're rejecting all this good Christian fellowship, all the joy, and the, the talking about the Bible, talking about the things of God talking about things that bring truth, peace, you're rejecting that, and instead you're hanging out with people that most likely really aren't your friends. And Paul says in verse 10, "...making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you." So Paul was a man of God. He prayed that he would be able to come to the Romans and see them. And we know we have passed from death unto life if we have a love for the brethren. If you reject the gospel... Then you don't like hanging around other Christians for the most part. They convict you of sin. They shine the light on your sinful condition. And if you reject the gospel, then you reject real Christian fellowship. And Paul, that's what Paul liked, was real Christian fellowship. And he desired to have a prosperous journey to come to them. Now verse 11. For I long to see you, Paul says, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. If you reject the gospel then you reject being able to get help spiritually by fellowshipping with another Christian, by hearing another preacher. You can't get real help from a preacher on certain aspects in your life if you're not saved. Uh, you're not even going to believe what he says about the gospel most of the time if you're not saved. But Paul was wanting to come to them and help them spiritually. Now verse 12, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. You reject the comfort that comes along with Christian fellowship. You won't have that mutual faith. And when a Christian gets with another Bible-believing Christian and they start talking about the Bible, they both have a Bible. They both know it's perfect. They're in accord on what they believe. And there isn't many more greater feelings than talking about truth from the King James Bible to another Bible-believing Christian and knowing you have a mutual faith and knowing that there's someone else out there that believes it just like you believe it. But you reject this comfort on your way to hell. Now verse 13. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Now see that? He says he's in debt. And every Christian is in debt once he gets saved. You can't do enough to pay the Lord back for saving you. He gave you salvation as a free gift and you need to spend the rest of your life giving out the gospel. Giving out the gospel to people that are going to reject it. Uh, find a way every day to give out the gospel to somebody. You're in debt to God and you need to give the gospel to every creature and pray for those who are rejecting it. And you don't do this to stay saved or maintain your salvation. You do it because you love God and you want people to be saved just like you. Now verse 15, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And Paul is one of those gospel preachers that you step over on your way to hell. He is a big obstacle on your way to hellfire. You could have gotten saved and been helped by a man of the faith spiritually. Someone like Paul. He was ready to preach the gospel everywhere he went. He dedicated his life to it. And if you go to hell, then you step over men in your area. Uh, there have been great men that were huge obstacles that men stepped over and dropped into hellfire. Men like Lester Roloff, Peter Ruckman, Danny Castle, Donnie Dalton, Harold Seitler, Sammy Allen. Many great preachers that thousands of sinners have stepped over. And many other men that were known for preaching the gospel in their area or wherever they went. You reject men who are unashamed of the gospel that you're ashamed of. Romans 1 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek that was the order of salvation after Calvary 
the Jew first and also to the Greek. And everyone has an opportunity to be saved. And anyone who rejects the gospel goes straight to hell when they die. The Christ-rejecting Jew will go to hell. The Christ-rejecting Gentile will go to hell. No exceptions. Now, number six, what does a man reject on his way to hell? He rejects God's righteousness. Romans 1, 17 through 18 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In the New Testament, the just shall live by faith. In the Old Testament, in Habakkuk, it says the just shall live by his faith. In the Old Testament, man found grace. In the New Testament, grace finds you. Uh, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. If it was revealed, revealed in the old, it was revealed in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Men couldn't get the righteousness of God in the Old Testament, but they knew they didn't live up to the righteousness of God. And now we can get imputed righteousness. And if you go to hell, then you reject the opportunity to be made perfectly righteous. The Lord Jesus Christ lived a sinless life and died on the cross took all the sins of the whole world and became that sin. He took your wickedness. He took your gossip, your lying tongue, your drunkenness, your adultery, your pornography, and all that sin was laid on his back. And if you get saved, God will let what Jesus Christ did on the cross when he became sin be payment for your sin, and he will give you the perfect record that's without blemish, and he'll give you that permanent record of Jesus Christ, that sinless record. You will have... His righteousness imputed unto you. If you reject Jesus Christ, then your unrighteousness stays on your record. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. And that is why you need a Savior. It takes the righteousness of God to get to heaven. And if you get saved, then God will give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You'll still have the sinful flesh in, in this life. But at the rapture, you will get a sinless body and you'll be perfect. And the holiness crowd thinks they have that perfection now. But this will only come at the rapture. My standing in Christ right now is perfection. But my state is however I'm living at any given moment. But at the rapture, I'll be made perfect inside and out. And if you reject Jesus Christ, then you reject that perfection. Now verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Men are unrighteous, so they lack unrighteous things and any truth they get they'll hold it in unrighteousness and try to pervert it but the just shall live by faith as it says here in, in romans 1 everything you do has to be done with faith you get saved by faith and everything you do in this life needs to be done with faith without faith it is impossible to please god when you hold a king james bible you need to hold it with faith don't hold it in unrighteousness and try to change it and correct it and uh, say this a better rendering would be or a better translation would be everything in the king james bible is perfect and when you try to change it you hold the truth and unrighteousness now number seven what does a man reject on his way to hell he rejects the creative hand of god on his way to hell and if you have eyes to look up and see the stars and the trees and the grass and the mountains and the oceans and the creation then you have no excuses for rejecting Jesus Christ. You see God's creative hand in everything. Every atheist is without excuse. The fool has said in his heart there is no God, according to Psalms 14.1. And the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Romans 1.19-25 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Even people who haven't read a Bible, heard a sermon, or heard the gospel... They know there is a God deep down. It's manifest in them. They know it's wrong to commit adultery. And that's why Abimelech, back in the book of Genesis, knew he was wrong to take Abraham's wife. He was a heathen, and he still knew. Now, verse 20 in Romans 1 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and God has it there without excuse. So you can see the creation. That means you're without excuse. You know that all of this couldn't have come from nothing. We see the God who is invisible through things that are visible. We see the things that are invisible through the things that are visible. Everything you can see shows us something about the spirit world. The sun itself shows you Jesus Christ. It rises just like he rose from the dead. The moon shines at night and the church age is referred to as nighttime in the scriptures. The, the moon represents the church that shines in the night. 
the creation shows us his eternal power in Godhead. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What you also know as the Trinity. And I'd hate to go to hell rejecting a thrice holy God. God is one in three and three in one. He's one God in three. All three are one. Uh, we aren't polytheists, meaning we don't believe in more than one God. We believe in one God, but he's three. One in three, all three are one. The same way man is a body, a soul, and a spirit, God is a body, a soul, and a spirit. You can't explain it. It's a mystery. And you reject the creative hand of the Godhead on your way to hell. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There you see the Father. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's the Holy Spirit. And then God said, let there be light. There's Jesus Christ who is the Word. Because it says, God said. So you see the Godhead in Genesis chapter 1. God's words spoke the world into existence. And if you go to hell, you reject the creative hand of God. Now verse 21, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You don't glorify the Creator as God if you're on your way to hell. You are your own final authority. You give yourself all the glory. You think you're going to make it on your own. You're unthankful for the opportunity to accept the free gift of salvation. You are vain in your imaginations. The imaginations and thoughts of man's hearts are only evil continually, as, as God says in Genesis 6. And all people do is think about themselves. They only think about this present evil world. They're not thinking about eternity. You're going to die and you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Their foolish heart is darkened by the God of this world who blinds their mind. Lest the light of the glorious gospel who is the image of God should shine unto them. If you're in rejection of Jesus Christ then your mind is blinded by Satan. And verse 22 says professing themselves to be wise they became fools. Notice that word professing. These college professors who deny the creative hand of God are fools. They have worldly wisdom. They chose the wisdom of this world over the wisdom of God and they became fools. Their foolishness if known, is known by their multitude of words where they deny God the, of the Holy Scriptures. And we didn't come from a rock. There was no big bang. God made everything. God said that there be light and there was light. God breathed into Adam the breath of life. And I have breath in my lungs because God blew air into Adam's lungs. Verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Deep down man knows there is a God. He just doesn't want the God of the Bible. So he will proceed to make for himself idols of gold like an iPhone. Idols of silver like an iPhone. Uh, things like that. They'll worship the corruptible men. Michael Jordan. LeBron James. They'll worship four-footed beasts and creeping things. They'll worship animals and nature and care more about an animal than a person. They'll care more about animals than God and, and everything else. But the God who created everything holds their breath in his hands. And if you go to hell, then you reject the same God that created all those men and animals and trees that you worship. Verse 24, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So most men worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. If you don't worship and serve someone else, then someone else, then you're probably just worshiping yourself and serving your own flesh. And he that liveth for the flesh shall die. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But now you've seen seven things men reject on their way to hell. So now let's look at the outcome. What happens if you stay in this type of rejection? Romans one twenty six through thirty two tells us some things about people that have just stayed in rejection of Jesus Christ and just kept living for the flesh and the world and the devil. It says, For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. Now, just because God gives someone up to vile affections, to fornication and drunkenness and whatnot, uh, this doesn't mean that He can't restore them and save them if they come to Him desiring to be saved 
and wanting to believe the gospel. As long as there's breath, there's hope. God rejected Israel, but Romans 11 shows us how they'll be restored, and all Israel shall be saved. And God can save the vilest sinner with the most vile affections and make him a new creature. How do I know that a reprobate can still be saved? A reprobate can still be saved. It's because if he couldn't, then that goes completely against Pauline doctrine. We aren't saved by works. We can't lose eligibility to be, to be saved by not living right before we even get saved. You know what a lost sinner does? They sin. All they do is sin. They are dead in trespasses and sins. To say a sodomite or some kind of sex pervert can't be saved is to preach a false gospel that includes living up to a certain standard before you even get saved and get the power of the Holy Spirit in you to live a holy life. There is no unpardonable sin that makes a man ineligible to be saved. To teach that is to add a work before salvation. Now, there might come a time when a person continues to reject, and they will no longer even retain God in their knowledge. They'll never want to be saved. But if they did desire to be saved, they knew they were a sinner, knew they were on their way to hell, and they were willing to believe the gospel and choose Jesus Christ, then the Lord is never going to refuse them. It is the responsibility of man to come to Jesus Christ when he finds out he's a sinner in need of salvation. But back to Romans, Romans one twenty six through 32, it says, For even their women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. What happens if you stay in rejection of Jesus Christ and just keep on sinning and sinning? Your sins get worse. You end up with unnatural affection. Women end up liking women. Men end up liking men. It says in verse 27, And likewise also the men, living the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So if you keep looking at pornography, you're going to eventually turn into a sodomite or some other type of sex, extreme sex pervert. Your perversion only gets worse. You need the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ to overcome that sin. Without getting the victory, you'll continue to get more and more and more perverted. You'll leave the natural use of the woman. You'll burn in your lust toward another man. And man shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And they always ask these Christian celebrities and TV preachers, is homosexuality a sin? And they say, well, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not that it's a sin, but it's unnatural, and it's not for me to judge or, you know, all this stuff. But you can judge it. God already said it's a sin. God said it's an abomination. It's wrong for a man to like another man. It's wrong for a man to fornicate with a man. Wrong for a woman to get with a woman. It's wrong for a woman to be attracted to another woman. It's vile affections. It is wickedness before the Lord exceedingly. Why sugarcoat something that God already said was of the devil? You'll receive the recompense, the payback of your error. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. If you want to keep staying in your sin and living for the flesh, the world, and the devil, God will let you be given over to those sins. Some sins get a hold of you. And when you think you have control of them, they have a hold of you. So if you keep watching porn, you'll find out you're not in control. If you keep drinking, you'll find out you're not in control of the bottle. God will let you... Stay in that stuff. And he may put stumbling blocks on your way to hell for a while. But then he'll let you be given over to it. Like I said, this doesn't mean a man can't be saved. Or that he's become ineligible to be, to be saved. But he's a lot less likely. And I believe there are some people who are so far gone that they don't even think about being saved. And they probably never will. They're just going to live this life fulfilling the desires of the flesh. And they most likely will never even think about being saved again. The saving power is still there, but they will forever refuse it. And look how they turn out. Verse 29 says, Being filled with all unrighteousness. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. They are full of sin. They can't cease from sin. They have eyes full of adultery. The next word is fornication. Fornication is any type of sexual activity with someone you aren't married to. Even if you are married to someone else. Adultery is a form of fornication. Fornication is sex with somebody that you're not married to. Wickedness. Uh, this is glorified today. When people like something, they say, that's wicked. 
And when something's wicked, it's twisted. They've taken something that's okay, but they twist it and make it wrong. Maliciousness. If you are full of malice, then you don't care to inflict injury and harm and cause other people to suffer. And you can do these things without remorse. You're just mean. And it wouldn't bother you to seek revenge and brutally hurt someone or their family. You don't even think about it. You could do it with no problem. Have no remorse. And when iniquity abounds, the love of many waxes cold. So if you keep sinning, you'll be full of malice. And you'll be so mean that you could torture a person just like an animal kills another animal without even thinking about it. You just do it. Full of envy. When you see the success of others and can't stand it because you're jealous and you want it for yourself. So it makes you envy. Murder. The world revolves around murder. Murder in the music. Murder in the movies. You have murder in your heart because you listen to Eminem. Who talks about murdering people in his music. The rap songs talk about murder. The movies talk about murder. Debate. Arguing back and forth constantly over stupid stuff. Deceit. This whole world is full of deceit. Everything is a rumor, a false flag, a satanic deception, a lie to destroy someone's character or testimony. People backbiting each other, telling lies, being a talebearer, getting on the phone and saying a bunch of lies about each other. Malignity. If you're full of malignity, you have persistent thoughts and actions that constantly harm other people. Uh, you ever seen someone who just lives to make someone else's life miserable? They're full of envy and malice. They just live to hurt somebody else. Most of the time, somebody that's not hurting nobody else themselves. That's who they'll go after to hurt. Whispers. That would be gossipers whose tongues are set on the fire of hell. Backbiters. People who just live their life to slander the name of someone else. Haters of God. Haters of God because they want to be their own final authority. They don't like the rules God's laid out. They want to get with the same sex. They want to have abortions. They want to do all these things that God said not to. Despiteful. This is extreme contempt. You just look down on everybody with your superior, superior attitude because you're a narcissist. You're a scorner. Uh, proud boasters. Too proud to come to God. One of the things the Lord hates is a proud look. And anybody, anybody who has a proud look, they're going to face their downfall. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And nobody has any room to boast except God himself. Salvation of not, is not of works, lest any man should boast. Inventors of evil things. Anything someone makes for the purpose of sinning. Rap music. Rock music. Country music. False religions. The book of Revelation talks about someone who loveth and maketh a lie. And Joseph Smith was an inventor of, ev of an evil thing. For example, Mormonism, he made a lie. He's an inventor of an evil thing. Next, disobedient to parents. From the time you're born until the time you leave home, the devil is trying to get you to be disobedient to your parents. On the cartoons and on the movies, he makes you think your parents are old fogey and out of touch with reality and don't know what they're talking about next without understanding the natural man is in rejection of jesus christ because he has no understanding of the scriptures for the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned covenant breakers you can't take them at their word their agreements and promises mean absolutely nothing a handshake means nothing Someone telling you something means absolutely nothing because they're covenant breakers. Without natural affection, people who have abortions, sex perverts, uh, implacable. You can't please them. You can't pacify them. The eyes of man are never satisfied. So hell is never full. Uh, unmerciful. They have no mercy towards anyone or anything. They can show no mercy to someone who may commit the same crime as they did, yet they expect mercy for themselves. Verse 32, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So they know the judgment of God. Deep down every sinner knows there is a God, and God has shown them right from wrong, and they commit these sins anyway. 
They also enjoy watching others commit the same sins, like on television. What are, what all are you going to reject on your way to hell? I've showed you seven things you'll reject on your way to hell, and I've shown you what you'll become if you stay in that rejection. So choose Jesus Christ over everything else. Come to Him and rely on Him and Him alone to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So I hope that you will quit rejecting the gospel. And come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are.